Hi, my name's Daniel and I have been working in Beijing for the past year. I originally graduated from the University of Southern California in 2008 and have been in with VIA here 2010 to 2011. So I've been uh, working and volunteering in two parts of Beijing. Uh, I teach English at the uh, University of Science and Technology Beijing and then I also volunteer teach at a migrant organization called Zigan um, that works with migrant community coming into Beijing. Uh, and it's been a really interesting experience for me because I see two parts of Beijing every week um, and they're very very different and it's been a very eye-opening experience for me here living in Beijing. I learned a lot of things this year. Uh, it's been um, one of the most meaningful I think um, that I've had so far. Um, one of the things I've learned is that I really like teaching. Um, I decided also from this year that I'm gonna go pursue masters in education back on uh, in the States um, and I really came to that conclusion from teaching and working with students uh, full-time here. It's been a really powerful and meaningful experience. So let me tell you about a typical day. Uh, usually I would uh, wake up a little bit late because I usually work late, sleep late, um, uh, have some lunch maybe in the cafeteria and then usually I would probably teach maybe two classes in the afternoon. Uh, I taught freshmen, I taught juniors, uh, I also taught some master students and kind of a variety of different levels um, as well. In the evening I usually uh, would maybe make some dinner for myself and then kind of prep in the evening for the next day's classes. Once a week I went to the migrant center um, and I would leave early in the morning on Saturday, teach a class, uh, and then we would cook lunch together uh, and then in the afternoon sometimes we had um, some uh, classes for, for third and fourth graders, kind of review classes. Sometimes we also had some different like study groups and things like that. So each week, um, each week was kind of the same but then month to month we kind of had some different schedules. China has taught me a lot of things. Uh, and I think it will, continue how, it will continue to teach me many things over the years. Uh, I'm not quite sure how it's going to immediately impact me when I go back to the States and uh, I want to pursue my master's in education. But I think one of the biggest things um, are two things. One, that I, I know more about China and about Chinese language, Chinese culture. And so you see it in the news. You see this country, this idea, really. Uh, but I feel like I know it on a different level. And I think that's really important um, in today's world that you know about another culture in a more meaningful way, not just as, uh, uh, as a name you kind of throw around. And the other thing that I think is really important is that I, I feel now having at this point in my life kind of uprooted, come to China, lived here, worked here, I feel a certain sense of empowerment to do the same thing perhaps later in life. To, start your own business or to pursue this own project or to uh, move abroad. It's kind of liberating to know that this is completely within your power to do something like this. And so I think I have both this short-term and perhaps long-term effect of knowing more about China, but I also have this longer feeling that what I have learned is partly that change is very possible and is always within your power wherever you are in life. So I got the opportunity to meet a lot of different people and work with a lot of different colleagues while here in Beijing. And one of the people I will definitely remember is a colleague at Zigan, the NGO I worked with. Uh, and he was a recent college graduate, about 24 years old, um, about the same age as I am. And uh, we had a lot of conversations. I worked with him over about a year. Partly our conversations were professional, talking about planning and things like that. Partly they were just about life. Uh, and I know at, at one point, sometimes I would talk to him about something and he wouldn't respond. And at first I didn't know if I said something unclear, if this is a language barrier. But then I realized he understood completely. He was just thinking. And he would think about it, think about it, and then he would respond. And he was a very patient listener, very good thinker. And one of the qualities I really admired in him was that... that um, that focus on really trying to understand what people are saying around you. And I think that's one of the characteristics I've learned um, about China and that he has taught me about patient listening and being aware of the people around you and trying to not only observe them but really try and feel what they're trying to say. Um, and that's something that I will 
continue to take back with me in the States and I hope that I and him can continue our relationship um, in, in different countries. I got a lot of questions from Chinese students. Some of them were ridiculous. They asked me things like, is American high school like Gossip Girls? And is it really true that this and this? Or I saw on TV one time that, and I really had to be really patient in addressing them. And I, and I realized that it's not necessarily their fault that they don't have a better perception of America. Um, and when I go back to America, I now have a responsibility to teach fellow Americans what China is like. And when they think, oh, do Chinese people all wear chi pows and, and they play cymbals and sing Chinese opera? And I say, no, that's not really it. You know, that's not really what modern China is about. Um, and it's this interesting position that I now am in. I think other people who are in positions of kind of cross-cultural um, communication are also in that it's an opportunity and also a responsibility to teach both sides and correct misassumptions, misperceptions. And it's one that I think is um, very needed in today's world. So I joined VIA also because I like that the, I like the amount of support that they were giving for their program. I like their focus on not only teaching but working with different organizations and having long-term partnerships. And I like their commitment um, in cross-cultural dialogue that this isn't just a one-time placement agency, that this is a long-term um, long mission that, that, that they have and I want to be a part of.